Hi everyone, it's a strange environment to meet in but we're going to share together this evening in prayer and I just wanted to share a few words from God's word as we do so. I was thinking uh, today about some of the things that I said on Sunday. You remember I said five things that we should think of when we're reacting to this coronavirus. It is an unprecedented situation, we are in unusual days. But it reminds us, remember number one, how weak we are. Psalm 90 says, teach us to number our days. We just hear for a moment and then we're gone. One little virus and the whole world has come to a standstill. The importance, number three, of faith, that we don't give way to fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of faith. And do you remember number four, the importance of prayer? How important that is tonight and in the coming days. If my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Well, I will hear from heaven, he said, and I will open the windows of heaven. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will importantly heal their land. And lastly, number five, we said the importance of the gospel. How important is the gospel today at this time? Well, I wanted to mention again, number two tonight, as we come to prayer, what really matters? What's really important? Do you remember, uh, you know, we said how trivial life is. People just live for vain things. The Ecclesiastes says vanity of vanity, all is vanity. And yet this virus has brought all these things to a standstill. We were due to make a trip to Geneva. Uh, just a couple of days to go out to Switzerland and just visit uh, our grandson Jack and Paul and Kate. They had to cancel the time out there and they're back in the UK. They had to make a dash for the border. The place shut down almost within 24 hours. Some people are actually stuck out there now. Everything that had to be cancelled for Paul, I mean those who understand he was on a skiing course, it was going to be two months. So it's a lot of planning for a year, a lot of time and effort gone into it and all that's finished. And now he's back home. Some people, he was telling me of a young couple that had gone out there who'd sold up uh, their jobs. They've come back, they've got nowhere to stay and they've got no jobs to go back to. Everything is a complete disaster for them. We know someone who's actually planned a wedding and they've planned it for four years. And it's due to be taking place in the next, you know, matter of weeks in Spain with hotels and accommodation and everything but what are they going to do now it's 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 everywhere look at the the sporting world I mentioned this on Sunday you know everything's cancelled the European championships are cancelled all football tournaments are cancelled football clubs are in uproar my club met uh, yesterday with a number of clubs to try and talk about going to court because they're not going to be allowed to finish the games and two of the clubs are already in promotion positions and the other four are, are, are wanting to you know get into the Premier League what are they going to do if you're in the relegation they're happy well let's let's cancel the league let's forget it we won't get relegated it may laugh at it and mock at it but it's going to cost not millions this it's going to cost billions of pounds that's just the sporting world and then you've got people, they're going to lose their jobs. They are. They're going to lose their jobs at this time. People are going to be in real crisis and difficulty because they're in the, if they're in the, you know, provision profession where you, you're caring, your, your restaurants, hotels, shops. People are, are not going to be required. The goods are not going to be required. The, the facilities are not going to be required. The business is going to go. People are going to lose a lot of money. You can't go on holiday, you know, you can't do the things that you normally would want to do, the things that people have planned to do all year for the years. It's all come to a standstill today. What is it teaching us? Well, this, what really matters, what really matters. Let me read you from Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. I, I, I want to draw attention to this tonight. And he said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness. But one's life does not consist of the abundance of the things he possesses. What a statement that is. A person's life does not consist in how much money they have, how many possessions they have, what things they acquire. Then he spoke a parable. Now listen to this. The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. 
And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I'll do this. I'll pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, what about this? Fool, you fool. This night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will be those things that you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Our life, said Jesus, is not about how much we possess. It's not made up of that. Our Lord calls the, the person who does that and ends up dead a fool. You fool. Strong words, aren't they? You fool. This very night your soul will be required of you. I think Jesus nailed it when he said, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Well, these are the things that we should be thinking about tonight as we come to prayer. The salvation of souls. This is very unusual, me talking into a screen rather than talking to real people. But I know you're going to listen to this and I know you're going to come to prayer. We can't meet together physically, but we will be together at the throne of grace tonight in prayer. Salvation of souls. Each of us know people that are lost without Christ. Each of us know people who are living their lives for things that don't matter. Isaiah 55, why? Why do you spend your money on things that don't satisfy, that don't matter? Come, seek the Lord while he may be found. This is the time, I believe. This is the year when God is given an opportunity. I was sad to see a video the other day of people in the 50s and 60s from our country. And it made me feel so, not sad to be British, but sad to see people in such a state. They were in Spain drinking away and they were just enjoying themselves. And the police were trying to say, come on, get back inside. You're not meant to be outside. And I just thought to myself, well, that's a generation. They were all in the 50s and 60s and older. They should have known better, but they don't. They've got a hard heart. They're not. We've got to pray for, for a new generation of people that will be touched by this. That it will make people question and ask, why? What is life all about? What is the things that really matter? If we believe these things, and we do, let us pray. Let us pray tonight that people will see what the scriptures say are true in the end. What really is important in this life. All these things that have come to a standstill are not important. So let's go to, to prayer tonight. I, I want to share with you, I was, I was due to be in Wales on Sunday, not, not in the tab, not going to be in the tab anyway. And I, we cancelled the trip and I spoke to the pastor down there and this will encourage you. There was a woman and she rang and she said, oh, she said, can you please help me? She said, I'm so afraid. She was in her in her 80s. She said, I can't get out and I'm afraid I'm going to die. She said, absolutely petrified. He said, don't worry, love, you're not going to die. And he went round to see her, to visit her. And he, he said, we'll feed you. Don't worry, we'll bring some food, which is things that we can do today. He took food around her. And she was so pleased. He reassured her that she wasn't going to die. He prayed with her and he gave her the food and he left. When he got home, the phone rang. She rang back. She said, I never asked, but can I ask now? She said, is it possible that I could have a Bible to read? Because I'm locked in at home and I could read the Bible while I'm in. What a wonderful, wonderful call to receive that is. A call from somebody desperate who wants to read the Bible. And I thought, and he thought the same. Isn't that what we want to see? Isn't that what we want to pray for tonight? That th through these trials and circumstances, people will indeed come to a place where they realise what really matters. Well, let's pray. And may God bless us all this evening as we do so. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Speak to you later.